Hello everybody, today we're going to be dealing with the equilibrium of a rigid body. And this is going to be the first problem that I deal with for you guys just to show the basics of what you're going to need to know. So the problem goes, determine the horizontal and vertical components of reaction at the supports. Neglect the thickness of the beam. Okay, so this is a really good problem because it introduces the pin and the roller also introduces uh, the application of moment to a member and it has uh, components of force with uh, this diagonal force of 500 over here. So what do we need to know before we can solve a rigid body problem? And a rigid body is basically just a solid body where deformation is equal to zero. So what's the first thing we need to know? Newton's laws. And we're going to need to know this because it is going to apply to our base uh, background knowledge for solving these problems, right? So the first, uh, first point is going to be that an object in motion will stay in motion unless an opposite force is applied to it, right? The second law is for every action so let's say we have a box resting on the floor. For every action, the force of gravity here, it's going to have an equal and opposite reaction, which is going to be Fn here, just as an example case. And then we know that the third law is going to be force is proportional to mass times acceleration. And these are vectors because force and acceleration both have a direction. What's the second thing we need to know? We need to know about equilibrium which is a big fancy word, but what is equilibrium? Equilibrium pretty much means that there are con conditions that need to be met so that the body experiences no translation or rotation. So what are the conditions? We have the summation of forces at X should equal zero, summation of forces at Y should equal zero, and the summation of moment should also equal zero. And this is applying to 2D problems. When you get into 3D, there's a little bit more you need to consider with the moment and uh, the FZ component as well. But for now, this is all we need to consider for equilibrium. And these are our base equations that we're gonna be working with a lot of the time. Number three, we need to know our supports. And this is probably the biggest thing we'll need to know or get used to when we first start doing these problems. So I mentioned earlier that we have a pin here so what does a pin represent? If we had a member going through our pin, we know if we tried to pull this, let's say this piece of wood here, if we try to pull it this way, the pin's actually restricting it from moving. So that means it's gonna produce a reaction in the X component. And similarly, if we tried to push it upwards, right? it's going to produce a reaction in the opposite direction because it's restricting the upwards movement. So a basic rule to follow is that if your motion is restricted by the support, then it's going to produce a reaction in that opposite direction, right? So typically for a pin, we generally assume an FY component and an FX component. Now let's take a look at some other uh, supports. We have right here is a roller, right? And we take a similar, similar approach to it. We can actually translate this piece of wood from left to right because this roller allows the thing to roll. But if we were trying to push down on this piece of wood, it's gonna be restricted from moving in that direction because of this roller, all right? So based on what we know, we have only one reaction here, which is Fy. There will be no F and X produced at a roller. And lastly, the one that's not in, uh, involved in this problem is going to be a fixed support. So you're going to have, let's say, a wall here, and you have a beam connected to it, right? Now, the cool thing about a fixed support is that there is no movement at all at this point, right? There is no upwards movement, so we're going to have a reaction upwards or downwards, an FY reaction, 
and there's no translation from left to right. So we're also going to have an X reaction. But what did I forget to mention in all these supports? Moment. Can we twist this point and have the member rotate? For a pin, yes, we can. We can have this member rotating. We can imagine that if we pushed it upwards, it would look something like this. So moment is allowed. It's not restricted. That means that no moment is considered for pins. And the same with rollers, it's a similar thing. It's allowing it to rotate about that support. The thing is with a fixed support, you don't have that same freedom, right? It's gonna look something like this if you try to rotate it. It's gonna stay fixed there, but it's gonna deflect downwards like that. So a moment is also needed to be considered for fixed supports, all right? So let's draw the fixed support just one more time. We have a moment, we have an FY, and we also have an FX component. Cool. And lastly, convention. Generally for these problems, you want to consider FY as positive in the upwards direction and F at X positive in the, uh, from, from the origin to the right. And then for a moment, let's imagine these, this rotation here, we have positive in the counterclockwise direction and negative in the clockwise direction. These conventions are subjective. You can make whatever convention you want that you prefer for the problem, but you just have to remember to be consistent in every problem that you do. This is the basic convention that most engineers follow. So it's pretty easy to just kind of pick these up and use them throughout the course of uh, your learning. So now let's try to actually get into this problem and see what we're dealing with based on what we know. Problem. The first thing we need to do is identify our convention. So as we mentioned before, this is going to be our convention for forces. And this is going to be our convention for moment. Cool. Now we have to identify where our reactions are going to be coming from in our supports. So we have a Y acting upwards. Why? Because the downwards component of this 500 pound diagonal force is acting downwards, right? So the opposing reaction to counteract that is going to be acting upwards. And that's similar with BY as well. But the cool thing about these problems is that you can assume whichever direction you want for these uh, reactions, because when you solve the problem, you'll actually figure out at the end of your solution whether your uh, assumption was right. Now, we also need to classify a force for a X because we know that a pin has a reaction in Y and X. So I'm going to assume that AX is acting this way. Why did I assume that? Because our X component of this force here is acting from the right. So this counteracts it by acting to the left. And we also have this downward force in the Y component for this 500 pound force. Now we have everything we need to solve this problem. So the first thing I want to do is solve for this AX because it's one unknown variable in the X direction plus one X force that we need to account for. So what do we use? Summation of forces at X is equal to zero. So when we solve for this, we are going to be left with negative A at X because it's acting negatively based on our convention. And we have positive this X component of the 500. How do we solve for that? Well, we consider the 500 pound force, but we also need to consider the special triangle. So we have multiplied by three over five. Why did I do this? Well, an easy way to think about special triangles is that if you are looking for the X component, you multiply your force by the X component over the hypotenuse of the special triangle. And you do the similar thing for Y, which we'll see later on in the problem. So now we simply solve for AX and this is going to equal three hundred pounds. And our sign convention is positive. So that means we assume that A of X is in the right direction. So 
I can write that here. Assumed. Right. So what does that mean? The negative, if we solve the problem with a negative sign, at the end, that means that we need to flip the direction of this arrow that we drew in the first place for the support reaction. So how do we solve for AY and BY now? We have two unknowns, and the summation of forces at Y equals zero won't work because you can't solve for two unknowns in one equation. This is why we're going to use the moment equation. Why? Because if we take the moment at A, we know that AY is acting directly, perpendic uh, directly parallel to that point. It's acting right along, along its axis. So it's not going to create any rotation at the pin. So now we just need to consider the rules we have for a moment. We have our first force, which is the Y component of this 500 pound force, creating a counter or a clockwise motion around this A point. So we have a negative sign, the 500, 4 over 5 for the Y component, and then the distance, which is 5 feet. The next thing we need to consider is BY, which is acting counterclockwise. So that's going to be positive BY. And then the distance from A, 5 plus 5, is going to be 10 feet. And then we also need to consider the 600 pound force. This is acting in the clockwise direction, so that is going to be negative. Now, what you can do is isolate for BY. You bring that over, it's going to be negative. And then you have all of this written again. And you notice that this, uh, this left side of the equation and the right side of the equation all have negative signs. So these negatives are going to cancel out at the end. So when you solve for BY, you should be left with a number of 260 pounds, which is positive, which is a good thing. It means our assumption is correct here as well. Now we can actually consider the summation of forces at y because we're only left with one unknown for y. So we have ay minus our y component for the 500 pound force because it's acting downwards, remember? Our conventions are cool. And we have by, which we solved earlier, which is 260 pounds upwards. Solving for ay, you're going to be left with 140 pounds. Our sign is positive, which means we assumed the direction of the force properly. So those are all of your final answers. I hope this problem helped to understand the basics and we'll get into more uh, tricky problems as we go on. I hope this helped.